Greetings all, this is Harry Nick back again to talk about some more new X-Wing stuff because at Star Wars Celebration, FFG announced Wave 5 of X-Wing. Actually, just before we get into this stuff, this isn't the only thing that FFG announced. We also got confirmation that Epic is coming. I mean, we already got confirmation of that from Adepticon, but we got a few images of what's going on here. Uh, there's a squadron maneuver squad template that helps you move a whole heap of ships at once to um, cut down on the flying time, which is very important when you have a lot of ships. So I'm very excited to see the implications of that, but we don't have any official articles on Epic just yet. But uh, yes, rest assured that I will cover it thoroughly when we do. Also, we got confirmation that the Clone Wars is coming to Armada. Now, I don't really follow Armada myself. I'm really much more of an X-Wing guy. If you're interested in discussions on that, head over to Crabox channel, another YouTuber that covers Armada a bit more thoroughly. Having said all of that, I must say, as someone who's outside the game of Marmada, been looking in and been going, ooh, I might, ooh, I might try that one day. The addition of two new factions does make that very tempting. So I may dive into this next year. We'll see how we're going with that. In the meantime, let's talk about this new X-Wing stuff because we have a couple of new ships and a couple of reprinted ships. In fact, let's just quickly go through those now because we have updated expansions for the Ghost, the Punishing One, the Inquisitor's Tie, and the M3A Skik Interceptor. Um, just having a quick look at the spread of those, doesn't seem to be anything crazy in terms of new additions. They all seem to indicate that they're coming with the same pilots and upgrade cards. Although the Ghost um, paragraph underneath does not specifically say reprinted upgrade cards, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have different upgrade cards. It does say that this is the first opportunity for us to use Maul. Um, I think it's a very good thing that they're printing it into the Rebel faction. However, it's kind of annoying for Rebel players that want to get access to Maul because they probably already own a Ghost if they're coming from 1st edition, so I'm not sure what the best solution is there. Glad to see reprints of things like Hate and Predictive Shot on the various factions. However, as much as I like that, I do have to comment that, hey, that doesn't really help us guys who have already been playing since 1st edition. Um, in case you guys missed it, um, we spoke about the Adepticon Legion spoilers a few weeks ago uh, over on my side channel. And in that video, we mentioned that Legion is getting a pack of upgrade cards added to their game. Now, while I don't think that is as direly needed in X-Wing, um, in Legion, the packs are very expensive. The upgrades are distributed pretty well, but some things you only get of like in one of in the commander pack and you need multiples of. So it makes a lot of sense in Legion. But the more I see this X-Wing stuff coming out, yes, it's fantastic for new players that we get these reprints in the packs, but for us existing players, I think FFG will eventually have to look at adding in an upgrade pack into X-Wing. I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. Oh yes, and one more thing, the Ghost this time uh, comes with a Sheetha P class shuttle, not the original Phantom, and the Sheetha P now docks with the model, which is really, really cool. So I'm guessing that means a re-sculpt on both of those. Hopefully an updated paint scheme as well. If you can see here, um, just on this render, the colors do look quite bright. Brighter than my mental image of the ghost anyway, so we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Let's speak about these new ships though. Starting off with this new guy for the Separatist, the Nantax class shuttle. So this was a Geonosian starfighter, so it's not a droid like the Vultures. Has life support, so it looks like all of our pilots will be having focuses instead of calculates. There is one pilot here on this spread that is referring to calculates, but I think that's specifically referring to the calculates on other ships, so probably still another focus character. The cool, interesting thing about this ship is it has a dedicated bullseye firing arc attack um, of three red dice. It also has a turreted attack of two red dice, but if you take a look at the baked in ability, it cannot move that arc to the back, so it's kind of... I think it's like more of a gimbaled laser cannon at that stage, not really a true turret. And after it fully executes a maneuver, it can gain a tractor token to move that arc, which is um, a serious, serious bit of power. Um, because when you take a tractor token, you can, of course, barrel roll or do the one straight with your ship, um, which is just very, very powerful. If you use it right, it can be used as an arc dodging mechanism. Um, it doesn't have any native barrel rolls or boosts, but you're being able to use this repositioning tactic for free, um, which is important on high initiative pilots, 
and have a look. We have an initiative six and a five. Um, that's all very, very interesting to me. I think um, new and interesting ways for ships to arc dodge is always something that we should be paying attention to. Now, I will say, yes, um, we are, there's always situations in X-Wing where, look, you can add all the great repositioning in the world, but if they're not sort of token efficient and all that kind of stuff, if they're just, the points don't stack up, it doesn't really matter how great your positioning is, you'll just get shot out of the sky anyway. So I do reserve judgment for this kind of stuff. Um, I think we need to look at relevant pilot abilities and points costing and all that kind of stuff. We don't really have any solid ace support on the Separatist just yet, but um, one of these alongside like your Darth Maul and a couple of Vultures could be an interesting archetype. We got this card spoiled as well in Snare, which is a talent for this ship only, which is interesting. I get the impression that this was a configuration during testing and FFG made it a talent because they found it comboed very powerfully with certain talents. I can understand that, like things like Lone Wolf or, or anything that combos with positioning. Yeah, I can see that being a very real possibility. At the end of the activation phase, if you're tracted, which you have a full agency to do, you may choose one ship in your mobile firing arc at range 0 to 1 and transfer a tracted token to it. Um, so we were talking about arc dodging before. This is another really, really spicy addition to that. Because not only can you use a tracked token to move your ship, you can then put it onto your opponent's ship and then physically move their arc away from your ship. Let's just use this Jedi Starfighter and Vulture as an example. Say this is the Nantex ship. Um, if it decides to go, hey, I'm going to fly here, it can give itself a tractor token and then give your opponent a tractor token. Oh, look, combine you've arc dodged your opponent. Um, is it really kind of dodging if you're moving your opponent's ship? Uh, moving the goalposts, I guess you could call it. Um, it's very, very interesting. Maybe this is magical Christmas land thinking, but um, it seems like it has a lot of upside. Oh, plus this does also work with your friendly ships um, for what that's worth. It doesn't work for a second tractor token on a Nantax, so you've got to be careful with that. But it means you can arc dodge with a vulture. It's at the end of activation, so it's after every ship moves. So even with your lowly vulture droids, it might set up a better shot. It might bring something else in arc. Seems like there's a lot of upside. And considering we are talking about initiative six and five pilots with this platform, I do think this is not going to come cheap. Um, it just depends on how efficient it is. I'm very, very curious about a new creative way of arc dodging, that's for sure. Apart from that, if we take a look at the spread, we have a copy of Duke in Snare. Some kind of card with the Nantex art on it might be a configuration or something. We have what appears to be Snapshot, I think. Now, we'll talk a bit more about that on the next spread because we actually have a bit better view of it copy of Stealth Device and Targeting Computer is coming back to the game of X-Wing, or at least what is most likely Targeting Computer. We can see here that it adds the target lock, it has a bunch of flavor text, so it's no special rules or anything. Probably a modification, but no guarantee. Um, it could theoretically be a sensor or something like that. Remember, the Nantex does not have target lock, it only has focus and evade, so anything that can give it some kind of action may be relevant. I'm curious about targeting computer on this platform, um, but like it was in first edition, I don't think it's going to make a huge splash, if I'm to be honest. Taking a look at the pilots, we have a generic initiative 3 and 4, named pilots at initiative 2, 4, 5, and 6. And if we have a look at these abilities, we can actually make out quite a lot of these. Our initiative 2 says during the system phase, uh, one something token at range 1 to 2, repairs 1. Okay, something to do with repairing, that could be helpful. Initiative 4, while you perform a primary attack against a defender that is tracted, use something something to attack dice. I'm going to guess that says re-roll. Another very powerful positioning based pilot ability at initiative 4, that could be a lot of fun. Our initiative 5 wants something to do with friendly ships with calculate tokens on them. It doesn't look like a name of a droid, so probably not a platform that has calculate tokens itself, but we'll see. And initiative 6, this is interesting because this reads almost the same as the initiative 4. While you perform a primary attack if the defender is tracted, you uh, something something attack die. Um, it could be you add one attack die, it could be you reroll one attack die. Given the spacing of the wording, um, I think rolling an additional attack die probably makes more sense. That's a very, very powerful ability. 
Um, yeah, initiative six within snare and that ability. Um, it's going to be something to do with boosting your attack, which is good no matter what. Very, very curious about that. Now, before we sort of get too excited about everything, yes, it only has four hull. Yes, it doesn't have a great action economy. Um, what I'm very curious about here is it's a very unknown quantity. Playing around with a lot of powerful things, uh, like being able to tractor during the activation phase, we know that is really, really powerful in this game. Uh, initiative 6 with repositioning abilities, that's always something to pay attention to, so that's great. Also, taking a quick look at the dial, uh, we have sort of a Kirax-ish like dial. Uh, no talent rolls, we have S loops instead at speed 3. A uh, 5 speed K turn for a bit of reach feels really, really good. No 1 straight, but considering it favours the speed of the 4 and 5 straight, I think that's okay. Okay, let's move over to the Republic Y-Wing, the BTLB Y-Wing, as opposed to the BTLA-4, which was flown at the Battle of Yavin. So first up, let's have a look at the pilot card that we had revealed here. Um, very, very similar to a regular Y-Wing on the Rebellion. Um, a better hull to shield ratio, but apart from that, all the same stats and actions. We've added in a baked in ability, Pelated Hull. While you defend, if you're not critically damaged, change one crit result to a hit result. Which is really good on a Y-Wing. These guys are already uh, really powerful in terms of their ability to tank shots. Um, if you guys are familiar with uh, like the five Y-Wing builds occasionally flying around with Rebels, they're very, very hard to shoot through. And I think for that reason, the Republic Y-Wings are probably not going to be able to be fielded in that way. There might be a bit more of a focus on pilot abilities. Although, maybe a four of. Who knows? We'll see. Looks very, very interesting. Yes, this guy has a more streamlined, chic chassis, which is not fun to say. Uh, better hull to shield ratio, more tanky. Sounds good. Sounds like a powerful thing to be able to have. If we take a look at the spread here, we've got a bunch of interesting stuff to talk about. First of all, yes, the Electro Proton Bomb included in this pack and the Hyena Bomber in the wave before it. So we're going to get some copies of that out in circulation. Great to see. If we take a look at the upgrades here, and this is a bit unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, the curse of Star Wars Legion seems to be coming over to X-Wing where FFG made a spread that is so low resolution, I can't even read um, the card on top. <laughs> uh, yes, this appears to be snapshot. Uh, range 2 with the missile thing, which means you don't get your bonus. It's actually a bad thing in this case. Um, after an enemy ship performs a maneuver, your dice can't be modified at the bottom. We can see that. Look, this looks like it's just going to be a straight up transfer of snapshot from first edition. That's kind of fun. I think it feels a bit fairer in second edition because we are limited hard to one bonus attack. Although it's more powerful from the point that defense die are not as consistent in second edition. Um, not a bad thing to see in the game. I think the key thing here is, yes, we can change the points, so nothing feels like it's going to get out of hand. Take a look at the rest of these upgrades. We have some kind of a special weapon that fires in the bullseye firing arc, um, which is actually interesting because if this is a torpedo, um, then that rules clarification FFG were talking about uh, just the other day with Cavill would trigger him because Cavill states that he gets a bonus die if he's not using a forward arc attack. So if that's a torpedo, um, yes, maybe that's a Cavill thing. Look out for that. We have some kind of reflexes that uses force tokens, probably a force upgrade, I imagine. It doesn't look like supernatural reflexes with different art. Again, FFG, why are you doing this to us? Just make it higher resolution. A uh, copy of Ion Turret, C-3PO. Um, Okay, C-3PO on a Y-Wing. So the Y-Wing has crew or C-3PO's a gunner. Both of those things are quite weird to me. He adds a calculate action and does some other stuff. I'm curious to see what he does in the future. Um, we have a copy of a Tano. I'm guessing that's a gunner card. Um, adds a force token, obviously, and does something with force, I imagine. Some kind of an astromech here. Um, I don't think that's R2-D2. It's a bit hard to make out the card. Um, it looks like something 1DF, so we'll find out what that is. A copy of Proton Bombs. But let's take a look at these pilots because we have something rather spicy here. Generics at initiative 2 and 3 and named pilots at initiative 2, 2, 3, 4, 5 and Anakin Skywalker at initiative 6. 
Um, yes, in case you guys haven't seen the Clone Wars cartoons, Anakin Skywalker did fly one of these. He flew it through this like nebula of gas clouds, which is actually the episode where the gas clouds appeared from the wave we just got. Um, so that's cool. Um, initiative six, I imagine three force tokens. After you fully execute a manoeuvre, something something to do with range zero to one, uh, bullseye firing arc, spend a force token to do something. I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate here. This is just too low resolution. Again, not going to complain too much about that, but yep, it is what it is. Taking a look at the dial, we seem to have a slightly, slightly worse version of a Rebel Y-Wing. The one banks are white instead of blue, but apart from that, it's all the same. So we're trading off a bit more tankiness for a little bit of maneuverability. Feels fair. Um, I imagine cutting away from the chassis would make it a bit lighter and a tad more maneuverable. Should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. Cool, so that's everything we know for Wave 5 just yet. Um, I kind of wish we had a bit more spice on the Sick and the Jumpmaster. I'm a bit underwhelmed with the way those ships are performing right now. So it would have been interesting to have a bit more flavor there, maybe a different pilot or upgrade or something like that. We've been doing a series here on the channel called The Junkyard, where we take a look at the ships that are performing so well, and these are both on the short list to go into that. Um, so now I have to think about how we're going to talk about this in the context that we're going to get a re-release of those with no new cards. But but look, that's alright. There's still other ways to play around with these things. FFG have confirmed that they can add more parts into the game in a separate way. So we'll wait and see what that means. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. Plenty more information for X-Wing to come out. Also, we got some more really cool announcements from Star Wars Celebration, including EA's new game, Fallen Order. Um, I will be making a video on that later in the week. I'm super, super psyched to talk about that. I don't usually talk about video games on the channel, but I will absolutely make an exception for this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Reddit. Please consider supporting my Patreon. Thank you so much to all of the existing patrons. I'll catch you guys in the next video.